The following information is purely for educational purposes. It cannot be construed as legal advice. You are to seek legal counsel wherever dealing with um, legal matters. This is just purely for educational purposes and um, this is just for your benefit. Thank you. Hey guys, George Tran here. Working hard for you. Um, I'm working on uh, these pleadings for uh, petitions for ver verification of debt, else release of claim. Obviously, my my training in legal matters have significantly improved since I got started in this process, and I just want to share with you what I've done lately, and hopefully you can learn from my process and um, apply it for your own. So this is what my my amended pleading looks like compared to my original which is pretty much like a one pager so now in in this particular case I have a um, jurisdiction of a, a judicial notice and blah 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 it's not really important so in, in when you're making your petition you want to have these type of uh, components in elements vital elements in your in your petition okay your jurisdiction and venue notice your judicial notice your statement of facts what actually happened I sent the defendant this, I sent them that, you know, I'm, I'm actually in this particular case, it is John Doe, the, me, suing the bank, okay, so, um, what else, here are the facts, this is what would, what happened, you know, I signed the loan on this date, they represented that they did a loan, and, um, but he, he, here's what's, what has happened, there's widespread, basically we're giving the, the um, judge, some background information about what is going on because there's so such a widespread practice of mo mortgage backed securities and uh, pooling of interest for uh, mortgages it's unclear who is actually the holder in due course and we want to um, discover who really is the holder in due course and it's a common practice we know this for a fact it's a common practice that banking institutions sell and or assign their loans and we don't know who the actual um, holder in due course of the loan is and who's actually entitled to, to collect and therefore, we want it's very reasonable for us to want to verify um, whether or not the defendant has claim or standing. So on this date, I sent them the first letter. On this date, I sent them the second letter. And then in response that they, they've not sent me anything, they, I, I specifically asked them to stipulate whether or not they are the creditor in this loan transaction. The question was ignored. I specifically and pointedly asked them whether they were a note holder in due course. This, que this question was pointedly ignored. Right. So now... I, in response to their inability to provide proof of claim, I um, declared them null and void with a notice of default and gave them an opportunity to enter a contest and yet the, they entered no contest. Okay, And so what I'm saying is, in, in their ignorance and their inability to provide me proof of claim, I'm declaring an estoppel via acquiescence. In other words, the, they've lost their say in this dispute. They can't go, go back and reopen this again. It's, it's done. And so the cause of action is basically thus, thus far, I've been very reasonable in attempting to get straight answers from the defendant. And yet the defendant still insists on collecting money from me and yet pointedly refused to provide valid proof of claim. Right? Despite me following proper rules and uh, civil procedures. And so I'm petitioning this court to make, render a judgment as to whether or not they have valid proof of claim. If they don't have valid proof of claim, to release all claims and make appropriate remedies. And um, I also want to take a judicial notice of my affidavit. Remember, remember what we said, an affidavit stands uh, true un unless it's rebutted. So my affidavit now presented this way, it becomes evidence as part of this, court, uh, this, this complaint or petition. Now, here are my claims. I'm c claiming that they are not a holder in due course. I've quoted laws and... Um, Give them case numbers, etc. And here's the evidence. I've, I'm claiming that they have estoppel uh, through acquiescence. Um, the defendant does not have the original wet ink signature. We, we've proven that because they haven't pr produced it to us within the time that we asked them to. The defendant lacks standing. We've proven that because we've asked them to, to state and they haven't. I've quoted case laws. Okay. And um, what else? Right, so again, it's evidence and it's through estoppel, through, through uh, acquiescence. They, they can't bring this up again. They can't deny it. All right. The defendant has entered no consideration in making the... Con the me it, no, uh, me start again. They have entered no consideration, thus making the contract void ab initio, void from the beginning. Right? To, have to, uh, to have a contract to be enforceable and valid, it ha both parties have to enter consideration both parties have to have full disclosure and the meeting of the mind. Well, 
they didn't enter into consideration because they risked none of their money, all right? And I'm willing to put in an affidavit to prove that, okay? In a, in a case done in 1968, uh, Justice Mahoney said that the, the, defend, the plaintiff, in this, in this case the bank, um, for purposes blah blah blah, did create the entire $14,000 amount of money or credit upon its um, books. So what this justice is saying is the bank created this entire amount and entered that amount as, these are just bookkeeping entries, okay, and entered that amount as consideration to support the note. In other words, they risked none of their money, and so the jury um, found that there's no consideration, and the judge agrees. So I'm using this as quoted, although it's not something that the judge can specifically uh, is required to um, respect because it's in a different state. It, this is in Minnesota, right, in 1968. He still has to kind of uh, give judici judicial yeah judicial notice to that and saying, well, you know, somebody did say that and it was, it's true. And so he, he has to kind of pay attention to it. So we're saying that they didn't um, enter any consideration and therefore this is not a valid contract. If You know, that's one of the requirements, right? You have to have a consideration by both parties. If I told you to mow the lawn and I'm giving you a hundred bucks, you mow the lawn, I give you a hundred bucks, that's consideration, okay? So that's, they didn't do the consideration so there's no contract, the contract's void.